Hi everyone, welcome. We're down here in my wormery and uh, what I've got going on right here in this bin is um, red wigglers. And this actually is my oldest red wiggler worm bin, which uh, was launched at the end of the summer. It's now middle of winter and it's aged, uh, I guess, you know, whatever, five months, five months, maybe five months in a week. It's 159 days of age. And um, I've got kind of a, a pattern that I like to follow, or at least a way of segmenting what I'm doing into little chunks so they're, you know, I kind of have a better understanding of what my objective is at e each so-called phase. So I've got these phases that I like to break my composting um, cycles down into. One which is obviously feeding it, you know, giving the bins food and composting materials and you know, at some point you want to set the stage for eventually being able to empty the container out and harvest the castings that the worms have made for you. Get the worms working in a new location and, you know, that's naturally harvesting. Uh, which um, isn't even really depicted here because it's just the, you know, it's the final step that you conclude the last stage with. And uh, the way I like to harvest, it's not the only way, but the way that I do it is where it's this concept of letting the worms do all the work. So rather than breaking out the sifter and um, using a light separation or whatever method it is that you might be using to um, get your worms separated from your castings, the approach that I've been using here is the method where you try to just lure the worms out of the finished compost uh, over into a, a more hospitable, more tempting location. So that's what I refer to as the migration of the worms, which here has been going on for about three and a half weeks. And that was um, also had its own little sub processes where like one of the processes was for me to actually do one haul out of worms already um, out of here. And with this second haul out that's going to be eventually happening, the, uh, the whole idea is that we're probably going to be left with just castings, not only with no worms in them and all the worms isolated into a single spot so they could be um, set up in a new home. So... I'm going to get to work on this bin over here, which, if we're lucky today, is going to be finished with its migration. And um, it will be possible to set these worms loose in a new spot um, and then just harvest these castings, put them into storage or use them immediately, whatever we might want to do. So I'm going to put this glove on and we can get to work. Now I've got a couple containers here. Um, number one is going to be a place for us to put some separated food large chunk items into here along with a little bit of extra bedding to move the worms with um, just so we can you know possibly reduce what we pull out of here down to almost like a worms only consistency this obviously um, is where we're going to be placing the contents of this feeding zone um, so here I am I'm all set to do this but you know there's always that possibility here that we're still going to find a lot of worms out here and that we're going to want to let this process continue so I'm, um, I hope I'm not counting my chickens here before they hatch. So uh, before we see how many worms we rounded up, I think the best first step is to realize whether we're harvesting today or just waiting and giving more time, you know. So these castings would be harvestable in my book if, you know, most if not all of the worms have moved out. It's uh, it's probably a given if uh, we were to look out here on the far edge, if I believe there were very few worms remaining out on this far edge. So if we find any out there, that would be like an immediate um, indicator that we've got to give the bin more time. But I believe even last time we looked in here, there really wasn't much action remaining out here. This stuff's been out here drying, you know, uncovered for the most part. To cover up with just a piece of newspaper pretty much is the same as not covering up. So we're gradually making our way over to where the feeding area is. I'm just taking this as a little bit of an opportunity to sort of blend in the more dry stuff that's on the surface to help it all start sort of sharing its moisture. Very nice. So far everything I've seen here, at least two thirds of it, is all what I would consider finished castings, pretty much worm free. At least I didn't see any worms. It is funny though, sometimes watching the video back, I notice worms that I'm missing while I'm doing it in real time. <laughs> it's only after the video that I could see the worm, but um, it's probably not visible to me from the perspective of where I'm standing. 
the camera just seems to have a, its own special view of things sometimes, a little bit better view of things from a different angle. So at this point, I think I'm, I'm going to kind of commit to the whole thing of considering this is a done bin and um, using all of this as um, being done castings too, ready to be pretty much put into storage. There's no big um, downside in my book to having a few worms remaining in here. There's, um, you know, plenty of material for them to continue um, being able to feed on in here. Even though it's finished castings for the most part, it is pretty rich in um, lingering organic materials that have not been broken down yet. So there will be um, plenty for worms to eat in here. And not to mention the fact that there's probably tons of uh, cocoons in here too, which are probably just going to start hatching out and resulting in little baby worms zipping around within the material pretty soon. And whether it's in storage or it goes right into the garden, however, uh, however you handle it, uh, it's fine. The worm, the baby worms in there will um, do just fine as far as I'm concerned. You just want to make sure you're not allowing the material to dry out, you know, excessively. But yeah, isn't that nice? Such a nice little batch of compost there, which I will, um, you know, pretty much remove at some point but you can see there's nothing much more to it than just pouring it out of here um, no picking through it no sifting it so there is always that possibility that there's still chunks of stuff in here which um, again based on what you're after personally may or may not be sufficient you know you might really want to break this stuff down to just castings only and you might want to pick out you know, remaining little pieces of shell or bedding or whatever, anything big enough to um, get caught up in a, a screen. And then the stuff that you would have would be really beautiful stuff. But you know, as far as I'm concerned, this stuff is really beautiful too. All right, let's move on here. The next step is gonna be to get these little guys situated in their new home. Got a whole bunch of nice bedding right there that we can make use of. Just trying to see what else here is still pretty much castings only. It's not, not surprising that what's on the other side of this is pretty much castings only and kind of even free of worms because the most recent feeding did get positioned all the way um, on the far edge here. So the freshest batch of food that was added, um, I don't even know, maybe a week ago at this point? Yeah, I think the last check-in was a week ago would be all the way on the outside here, you know, big, big chunks of bedding that we can recycle here. So let's start bringing things over. If stuff is clearly just bedding or large chunks of um, uncomposted food or whatever it is that we might bump into, this is gonna be our little spot to um, house it. And then once we dump it into the new location, it's gonna be going with some nice fresh bedding as well. So there's certainly a lot of easy to access large chunk bedding right here on the surface. Let's see how much of this stuff I could pick off. I think the last check-in was a week ago. Would be all the way on the outside here, you know, big, big chunks of bedding that we can recycle here. So let's start bringing things over. If stuff is clearly just bedding or large chunks of, um, uncomposted food or whatever it is that we might bump into this is going to be our little spot to um, house it and then once we dump it into the new location it's going to be going with some nice fresh bedding as well so there's certainly a lot of easy to access large chunk bedding right here on the surface Let's see how much of this stuff I could pick off created bedding for these um, feeding areas I always thought to myself how it might be nice to leave some of the material as somewhat large chunks 
so that it maybe it's just a matter of shaking it a bit and um, being able to release any worms that are stuck to it or any castings that might be stuck to it um, to do kind of just a sort of a, a quick shaking off type separation one that's not really critical or you know one that doesn't matter how many worms you miss if you miss a few in the folds of the paper or whatever the case may be but you know just with a quick visual inspection you can sort of get a, a sense of the fact that you've probably got in a large um, portion of the worms off the bedding that you've separated pretty quickly in the matter of just a minute or two so I've um, I think that I've managed to get a good number of large bedding bits separated out of what's at this point hopefully just a pile of worms so maybe the next thing is going to be just to do a little raking through of the material with my finger to see if I could spot anything else. By doing so, I think it was pretty easy to um, weed out the last few little larger bits of things in here that are going to be easy enough to just pull out and separate. So we've got, obviously, a whole bunch of casting material here remaining. And if we really wanted to go the extra mile, we could sort of um, give the worms to all vanish out of view under these bright lights skim off some of that material that they just you know immediately evacuated and um, start reducing this down to a almost pile of worms only uh, I don't know should we bother well it is always fun to watch the worms squirm away from bright lights and it is kind of nice that we can sort of quickly retrieve another couple handfuls of these uncomposted bits of stuff out here on the top surface and man there's so many nice castings just mingled in here too It'd be kind of nice to be able to salvage some of those castings too and keep them with my castings collection but you know what I think it's just fine if we just allow some of this material to go with the worms it'll uh you know, it'll allow them to remain in their own kind of, their own space, their own material for a little while before they just on their own feel comfortable enough to venture out into their new bin. We're going to be placing these guys into the um, the newest of my Red Wiggler worm bins. And offhand, I've written down so many stats about these things, I don't even remember <laughs> at this point how old that newest bin of mine is. Hey Siri, how many days have passed since January 14th? It was 13 days ago. Well, that is not a very old bin at all, is it? It's uh, less than two weeks old. So that um, that bin has only so far been launched with the worms that came out of here, out of this bin, during that first haul out. So at this point, it's kind of a reunion too, right? Going to have a nice happy ending for these worms. Leave them behind all of their manure, which I have a good use for, but they probably don't. It's out of food. It's going to dry out. Um, we're going to be giving them some nice new accommodations. So let's see if we can get this whole package here to fit into this little plastic tub. I hope it does. <laughs> let's see how that goes.
Okay. I think we've gotten the majority of them, and if there's a few remaining in here and we um we let them just stay with the finished compost, they're gonna be just fine too. They'll be um they'll be helping something else. They might be they might not be down here in my wormery helping to break down compostable materials for us, but they'll probably be out there in my yard doing the same job with, you know, leaves and grass and anything else that uh, comes their way out there in the fresh air. A little bit more perilous out there, maybe some, you know, additional stuff that could potentially prey on them, make a little meal out of them out there where it's uh, a little bit more wild. Um... So whatever ones remain here are usually kind of pampered and well taken care of. <laughs> so here we go. It's not too much. So I could even pop the lid on that thing if I wanted to. Okay, so make some room for my newest bin. It is the 13 day old. Oh, it's so light. It's got like no weight to it at all. It's um, you know, whatever worms, whatever bedding, whatever was launched um, off with originally. Plus, I believe maybe just one feeding, maybe two feedings tops. I guess the next feeding that the bin receives is going to be a pretty important one with all the additional mouths to feed. It's always kind of fun to open up one of these bins that has a plastic covering on it. In this case, a, a custom plastic covering that's wrapped in a cardboard covering. Get all of our little welcoming party. Uh, hanging out here to greet us. I think we're just going to give these guys a break by folding this piece of paper in half. It should stay, stay nice and damp and dark for them. While we just get them out of the way. Eh, what else we got going on here? I guess the feeding will continue to mark it where the last feeding occurred. In this case, we're, we've been feeding this bin on a kind of a rotating corner feeding pattern. So the worms will probably realize that that's where the party's occurring right now. Let's uh, let's actually first start by putting in, I don't know, should we take the reclaimed material and pile it on top at the end? Yeah, why don't we do that? That'll be a nice covering for them. Even though by the time we get around to doing that, it'll be a, uh, <laughs> the worms will all be submerged anyway, so it won't make much difference what we're covering them with. Yeah, I think we've gotten them all. There's one little baby I almost missed. So I'm going to give this thing a little shake, this pile. A quick shake, just so we can get a slightly better look at how many worms we've captured in the second haul out of this container. I didn't really even go to the you know extra extent of trying to like you know feel how heavy the pile is. Eh, I don't know, maybe another thousand or so. so my guess would be that there's probably about 2,000 worms in this bin. Let's let these little guys get situated. And we'll be back to check on them in a minute. Well, that's always a lot of fun. There's this one worm over here. I didn't feel like waiting the um, whatever amount of time it's going to take for that last worm to get out of view. I just figured it would be time now to, you know, finish up what's happening here. But before I do, I just wanted to really quickly get back to my little list here because there was one or two other things on here that I didn't really touch on. But people might be wondering, hey, what, do you, what did you mean by that? So um, by that, you know, by that I really meant down here the, um, the whole idea of how many set, uh, feedings went into this. Um, so yeah, you know, the, those finished castings, uh, with the exception of the few that came over with the worms, you know, the, those castings that we're considering as our harvested batch today, you know, what can you equate that to, you know? So like, um, in my mind, the, uh, the 17 feedings was not just a straight up 17 feedings, because in my mind, that last four feedings... Um, were the, the feedings that I used when I had built that horizontal migration feeding area. And, uh, and at that one point where I had also reinforced the feeding in that feeding area. So every 
bit of food that was used in that horizontal migration feeding area, I, I count that separately because that ultimately ended up going with the worms in the end, right? So if I wanted to equate um, a specific number of feedings that occurred in this bin that I can equate to those finished castings that I'm collecting at this point, um, then I would really be thinking about the, the root number there, that 13 minus the four feedings that went into the building and maintenance of the horizontal migration feeding zone. In my mind, it's the, the original build of the bin, which includes one feeding technically, uh, as well as um, 12 more, which happened during the normal um, maintenance and upkeep of the, the bin, that, um, that in my situation normally equates to about two handfuls, maybe two and a half to three handfuls tops um, per feeding of materials. So here I am, you know, it's very rough numbers and very um, simple kind of measurement methods, very inaccurate measurement methods. Um, but yeah, I, occasionally I do kind of yearn for a better understanding of how many feedings it's going to take to get to what point and so on and so forth. A lot of questions have been coming about that too lately and it's, you know, the best answer is that it depends. Because <laughs> in my case, is usually the reason for wanting to put an end to a, a bin is because I'm out of space, you know? I don't like working in overly packed bins. I get to a certain point in a bin, things look really nice. It's at that point that I'll usually set the stage for trying to migrate the worms out and harvest their castings and get them working on a fresh um, fresh spot. So I can see cocoons in here, I believe. Is that a cocoon? Maybe I'm seeing things. But I would not be surprised if there was a whole bunch of cocoons going on here too. So the, um, the feeding area, that we had is over here in this corner. So we'll go back to marking that with the feeding zone indicator that we pulled out earlier. And all of this um, used and new bedding material that I'm throwing in here, I'm just gonna kind of put that into, into, hold, into a holding pattern there. So I think what we'll do is when we feed this bin next, we'll, uh, it's at that point that we're really gonna have a good opportunity to recycle all this bedding material and whatever few, few food scraps made it over into here because you got to admit, we saw the stem of a banana, right? But not much anything else. So other than the bedding that came along with that last feeding that went into here seven days ago, just seems like, you know, we came in here in the nick of time almost. That's my basic sense here because um, there really wasn't any food remaining in that horizontal migration feeding zone anymore to continue luring the worms out, you know? I wonder if leaving it any longer could have resulted in the worms just exiting and working their way back into the finished compost. So, I don't know. All little weird unanswered questions that I always um, I think about after doing one of these. So, wow, that was fun. It's always fun to come down here with a certain degree of uncertainty, right? When you get down into one of your bins that you think might be finished, but you can't really say for sure and you don't want to get your hopes up so you just keep kind of riding that fence until you can see for certain what the story is i don't know that's the way i like to play it kind of adds a little bit of excitement and uh suspense i don't know if you're into that <laughs> all right everyone that's it for today hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did please remember to leave me a thumbs up and if you haven't done so already consider subscribing to the channel too those are both really appreciated all right everyone have a great day thanks for watching bye